December 2001, Congress named the National Museum of American History the official repository for September 11th. In keeping with that responsibility, today's donation brings new objects into the National Collection and reminds us of the continuing story of September 11th and the impact it had and continues to have on American lives. As it happens, I was at the museum nine years ago in the role of acting director when another exhibition, September 11th, Bearing Witness to History, opened at the one year anniversary. That was a year long exhibition that then traveled the country to sites our Smithsonian Institution Traveling Exhibition Service. With the 10th anniversary, we wanted to provide the public with a place to remember and reflect. This is an anniversary that will generate an intense amount of interest among the public for a set period of time. So with the help of more than 150 people from the museum's staff, docents, and volunteer corps, we are able to present this, this display for only nine days from September 3 to September 11. This unique experience hosted by our staff allows us to present an unprecedented close-up view of September 11th objects. As you can see, this presentation will be an unusual blend of a public program and a display of artifacts. The objects are on open tables, without cases, and with short labels. Visitors can then ask questions, and they may, and we hope will, leave their own stories by posting comment cards around the corner. With the theme of remembrance and reflection, we offer the museum as a place of healing, a place for contemplation and consolation. The story of September 11th is still being written, and we remain committed to collecting that story. To tell us more about the objects being accepted today and the display that the public will see beginning September 3, this is, is Cedric Ye, curator of September 11th Remembrance and Reflection, and deputy chair of the Armed Forces History Division, where most of these objects are protected. In December 2001, Congress officially designated the Smithsonian and the National Museum of American History the National Repository for September 11 collections. The museum had already sent its curators to the attack sites in October, just a month after the events. They were charged with collecting and preserving the story of September 11. Three points of focus were chosen to guide the collecting efforts. The attacks themselves, first responders, and the recovery efforts. Among these collections are photographs, claim cards, thank you letters, pieces of the Pentagon, first responder uniforms, personal items such as purses and cell phones, EMT equipment, and parts of fire trucks damaged at the World Trade Center. As a whole, the objects in our September 11th collections have stood the test of time. They are all representative and effective. They do what we want them to do. They show the ordinary moments in the midst of devastation, helping our visitors understand that September 11th happened to all of us. As we prepared for the 10th anniversary of September 11th, the museum re-examined their current collections. Interactions with other September 11th organizations have shown that our collections compare favorably, but the original collecting curators limited themselves when collecting, otherwise they would have been overwhelmed. Our active collecting has since sought to represent how we as a nation remember September 11th, and we have added oral histories and interviews, personal memorials, and scrapbooks to the collection. But there are still gaps in the collection certain subject areas were left for later scholars and collectors. And that's where I come in. One of these areas was the American response. Not the first responders such as the firemen and women of the FDNY or the search and rescue teams that came afterwards, but large scale events such as the mobilization for the invasion of Afghanistan and the war on terror, where the government and the people worked together to provide a sense of unity and purpose for the, after the horrific attacks of September 11th. Several of those early American responses are still reverberating through our lives. Two of the greatest impacts of the post-September 11th world, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, are already documented in our armed forces history collections. The museum felt there was a third significant impact on American life that had not been represented, the way we traveled. 
transportation has played and continues to play a large part in who we are as Americans. We felt it was important to tell the story of how America, travel in America, has changed. We decided to pursue collecting with the Transportation Security Administration. The TSA was created in the wake of the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. The Aviation and Transportation Security Act gave the TSA three major mandates. The responsibility for security of all modes of transportation, the hiring, training, and deploying of security officers for 450 commercial airports from Guam to Alaska in 12 months, and to provide 100% screening all checked luggage for explosive by December 31, 2002, and the largest civilian undertaking in, his, in the history of the United States government, TSA met its congressional mandates. Fortunately, TSA has always had a sense of its own history and had preserved key items from its founding, which was of great help to us as we began to think about what would help us tell the story of how American lives have changed since September 11th. The museum's time frame for this collecting focused on September 11th plus one year. Two aspects of TSA's work during this time were highlighted, are highlighted. The TSA presence on the ground and in the airports and the TSA presence in the air, in the airplanes with the federal air marshals. Among the objects we are accepting today are the familiar gray bins for collecting our shoes and belts and laptops, scanning wands, federal air marshal training kits, with practice pistol, a security screener uniform, and a walk-through metal detector. I felt that these were symbolic of the changes of September 11th. As historians, we continue to ask ourselves, how will Americans remember these events 25, 50, or 100 years from now? What questions will those who are not yet born ask? We can't know for sure, but we do know that the National Museum of American History is the place to think about what it means to be a part of history, to contemplate how historic events affect our lives as individuals and as a nation. This has not been an easy undertaking. It is one that is a collective effort from the staff across all areas of the museum. And I would like to thank my colleagues for their dedicated work on this display. And to the leadership and staff of TSA, we appreciate your generous transfer <coughs> to the National Museum of American History. It is chiefly through transfers such as yours that our collections, our collections continue to grow and improve. 